Good morning. Hold on, I'll pretend. Oh, good morning. Good to see you all here. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Pentecost. We're still in that Pentecost season. My name is Pastor Michael. For those of you at, uh, that are watching us through live stream, and I get the privilege of serving as pastor of the fine folks here in Watertown. So I pray that as we gather for worship and as we gather in this space, you'll feel the Holy Spirit gather among us and be a part of all that we do. May the joy that comes from worshiping God inspire us to love God and love one another in ways we would never even dream. And be assured that all means all in the United Methodist Church and all are welcome to worship here. If you're a guest today, I would ask that you please fill out one of our uh, welcome sheets in the back at the Welcome Center and uh, let us know where you're from. And if you're looking for a spiritual home and don't have one or haven't found one, then we highly welcome you to join us in this place. So now I'm going to pass things over and I'm going to welcome Nate and Olivia Lehman, who God has chosen to serve as our liturgists this day. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Good morning, everyone. As uh, Pastor Michael mentioned, my name is uh, Nathan Lehman. I'm being joined by my daughter, Olivia, for the uh, liturgist, being the liturgist for today's service. I'll be honest with you, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, therefore I brought somebody up here who, who does, who can hold my hand during the course of this uh, of the service today. Uh, it's great to see all of you this morning, both of you, uh, those of you who are here live with us here at Asbury and those who are watching uh, live on the internet. Uh, thank you for all joining us today. Uh, if you have any announcements, please move to the front of the sanctuary at this time. And uh, actually, my daughter Olivia has an announcement regarding Sunday school for today. Hello. Um, unfortunately, Sunday school is canceled today. Um, next week, uh, Father's Day, there will be one class, but that'll be for the class of pre-K to third grade. Thank you. I'm not sure if everybody has gotten an email about it, but apparently there's going to be a memorial service for Joyce McIntosh. Uh, it'll be Saturday, June 29th, and I will be getting a hold of our the Christian Connections Committee uh, but they, they would like a reception afterwards. I will not be able to be here. My granddaughter's graduating from Lowville. Um, so anybody that wants to help participate or help set up or whatever you want to do, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'll get an email out to the committee members. What time? One o'clock. <laughs> Good morning. On behalf of the trustees, some good news. The door reconstruction on Parker Street has been started, and it should be finished this week, and that should be in operation again by next weekend. Thank you. And I have this as well. Okay, and there's also further announcements and information within your bulletin. Uh, we do want to make special mention uh, of a couple birthdays we have going on this week, both on June 14th, Jean Lesage and Alexander Patrick. And uh, we, you may remember last week we, we introduced what we call the, uh, what is that called? the birthday blessing. So for those who don't know what they are, Pastor Michael, could you kind of explain that? Let me get in front of the microphone. 
Um, how this works is we're going to make a big deal out of our birthdays because they're just another day for some of us, right? But anyway, we're going to spoil ourselves in style by celebrating and sharing with each other. For those that are listed, those that are not, if you have a birthday, please come forward, drop your pennies in. It's one penny for every year. If you want to give one dollar for every year, that helps offset postage. If you want to give ten dollars for every year, we will give you a gold plaque on your pew. It's up to you. So Alex gets to put in 10 cents because he's celebrating 10 years old. <laughs> he's 38. I know, I was kidding. <laughs> anyway, so if there are any others, feel free. And this is something we'd like to do just to celebrate before we worship and, and share in your special day. Okay, Liv, come on up. Come on up. Do I got to get a hook? Come on up. Or not. Okay. Welcome to what it's like at home. She doesn't listen to me there either. No, I'm talking to you. Let's uh, get our service underway. We're going to start with the music. First, we have the prelude. Uh, In my heart, there rings a melody, courtesy of our praise band. That'll be fired, followed by the choir, Introit, uh, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who are called the Prince of Peace, you yourself called us for peace and reconciliation. When you called to us, you always proclaimed peace to you. Please grant us peace. In this day, we especially pray for peace around the world. We pray for all those who are in harm's way, those who are in conflict, those whose lives have been in ruins and for all those leaders. We pray for your peace to be among them. Make all of them witnesses of truth and justice and love. Let there be communication. Let there be peace that just surrounds each and every person. May we all become siblings in Christ. This day we especially pray for those that Served, that serve in the armed forces, and we pray for those in our backyard here in the 10th Mountain Division. So we pray for peace this day. Be with us. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Please join me to the call to worship. All who need a place to belong, join the family of God. All who seek spiritual siblings, join the family of God. All who strive to grow in faith and love, join the family of God. As, as a family of God, let us share signs of familial love as, as we pass the peace of Christ. Our next hymn in the Faith We Sing book is We Walk by Faith, number, 200, number 2196. Join me to the opening prayer. Sovereign God, come to us when we lose our way, for we need you to be our king, to lead us on right paths, teach us the ways of life and death, and shelter us from our foes. We need you to be our comforter, to love us as father, nurture us as a mother, shelter us as a brother, and assure us as a sister. Welcome us into your arms of your mercy. And we need you people, even as you are can. Amen. Our choir anthem today is, This is the day the Lord has made.
We now invite all of our young disciples, either young in age or young at heart, to come forward for a moment with Pastor Michael. Come on up, gang. Come on up. Come on down, gang. Ah. Ah. This is the time we can just chill and have fun. Come on down. Ah, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh. Oh, Lily. It's so good to see. So good to see all of you here today. Wow. So, what do you think? School's winding down. You ready for summer? Four more days? Okay. A month? Nine days? All right, cool. You know what song we play in my house when the kids come home from school on that last day? It's a Connie Francis too. You know what it's called? V A C A T I O N. <laughs> She's doing the da da da. When the summer comes, right? Put away the books. <laughs> like you didn't know it. Anyway, we crank it right up, too. And then, first day of school, you want to know what I play for the kids? <laughs> I usually play it out by the mailbox. Celebrate good times. Come on. In celebration. <laughs> You're the birthday boy. Who else am I going to sing to over here? All right. Well, anyway. So, okay. I'm going to, I hope I have enough because I'm going to give you this little white box. And in it is something special. Is it a spider? No, it's not. I wouldn't be that rude. All right, I'm going to give you each one of these. Now this is what? It's a mirror. Why in the world am I giving you a mirror? Are these those like stick on your mirror things? I don't think so. No, I think they're like real deal mirrors. Yeah? Like one of those things you can put in your locker. And when I had hair back in the 1890s, I used to comb it in between class and look in the mirror. Now I regret all that. Actually, I got into ministry and it took all my hair away. Oh, wait, my have to. I'll get that out. Oh, I got one left. I hope I didn't leave anybody out. Oh, no. I did, didn't I? Would one of my older youth be willing to? Okay, we can share. I told you I was worried. Well, anyway, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Yourself, right? What do you see about yourself? What's in there that give me one positive thing you see in the mirror? Did you have something? I heard something. Your eyes? Okay. Your forehead? Yeah, that's a very tiny mirror. Anybody else? Well, you see yourself one way, and you know what? Other people see you in different ways, right? What do you think Jesus sees when he looks at us? What do you think God sees when, we, when God looks at us? Does God see somebody that's caring and willing to do something special for somebody or help somebody? Or is God looking at somebody who's mean and miserable? Somebody who's not listening to mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or your aunt and uncle? Both? 
well, you know what? At least you're honest, right? If we can't be honest in church, how can we be honest with God? And you're a kid. All kids are. Yeah. We all go through that stage. Although I was perfect. In every way. I don't need a nudge from my daughter. <clears throat> yeah, you know what kind of nudge that was, Olivia. All right. But I want you to always remember when you look in this mirror that you were made and you were called special. You were called to go out and do good things. So what you see, allow that to become transparent to other people. Allow them to see it. Oh, it's hard to juggle a mirror. It is. These are very unique mirrors. All right. And then we have something special I would like us all to do today. Because someone among us lost their pet last night. So, is she right? Okay. And what's your first name? Aiden. Aiden? All right. So Aiden lost um, his dog, Precious, went to heaven last night. And I thought, since him and his family came to sit and, and just become one with the church and wanted to be here just for this occasion, we should pray. All right, let's pray for him and for his dog, okay? Because I'm sure we've all lost animals. And then I'll wrap up our prayer along with this. Oh, that's good. See, God's calling us right now. God is saying, all right, I'm talking. All right, let's pray. God, we... Thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you give to us. And we especially pray for Aiden's family and especially for Precious, who you called home. And we pray that you will give them strength and comfort in the days ahead. And that over that rainbow bridge, my little litany and others of us who've had pets that have died will be there to to welcome Precious in their presence. And be with us too as we go through the last days of school and as we enjoy our summer family and friends and and hopefully a Sunday morning here and there. So bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That was very nice of you to bring Precious as collar. All right, so I have something in my treasure box. Oh, nobody took the treasure box today. Why don't we drop it on my head? You know, that would be my luck. Birthday boy's got to be the one to open up the treasure box. And while we're doing that, we're going to be a little little more on the quiet side because my friend Carrie is bringing up my sister in Christ. And her name is Joanne, and she's such a good, good, good person. And uh, so anyway, come take something from the treasure box. There's plenty. Just like a minister to steal my thunder. Good morning. I know this is the moment you all wait for in this service, is the mission moment. But before I introduce our guest, there are several mission team efforts that I would like to mention. First and foremost, Max Bovey has joined our committee. So thank you, Max, for stepping up. We provided a $500 check to Michelle Matthews' son, Eric, whose family lost their home in the fire in Adams about a month ago. The Redbird organization, as I told you, made a plea as they'd lost over $600,000 in donations. So missions voted to send them $1,000. In addition, Ben Rudd is investigating a youth group trip to Redbird next spring for a work week. Missions is also supporting the food pantry of Urban Missions. We started this bread donation every Communion Sunday. Last month, we had 32 loaves of bread, and this last Sunday, we had 40 loaves of bread. Realize the need is 60 plus loaves of bread a week. Tell your friends. 
I received a thank you note for getting Asbury involved with the community dinners. This person worked over 90% of the Tuesday dinners which Asbury was part of. Now I say thank you to you for your volunteerism. So as Pastor already said, we have a special guest, Joanne Nugent Ward, who is from Emanuel Congregational Church and worked with the Asbury Group on Tuesdays for about four months. Joanne? Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Reverend Michael. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, our community meals started small last year. Um, and 30 was a big number for us to have for diners during the meals. This year, however, we went to every night. And what happened was we invited folks from around the city to help us with those meals. The least we had this year was the first night, which was zero. That left us a little nervous, <laughs> but soon participation picked up and our, our, our highest number of diners was 79. Over all winter, we served over 6,000 meals. And we could not have done that without those who helped us. Stephanie Russell is a spitfire, and I am not. But if she was here, she would have said, Happy Sunday! Because she does that when she gives her mission moment every uh, Sunday, but she does it a little bit more enthusiastically than that, a little louder, too. But believe it or not, she's, she's shy, and I am not. <laughs> so she was really the catalyst for getting people involved. Um, I cooked on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, and the best helpers that I had came from this church. And I cannot express my gratitude enough. So those of you who helped us, would you please stand? I know that you're here among us. Look at that. Without you, the Tuesday nights would not have occurred because there's no way I could do it all by myself. <laughs> as well as the folks from Asbury, we had folks from Holy Family, from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, from the Sisters of St. Joseph. We had people come to serve from DPAO and they were in their element. They loved serving the diners. Bosies would cook for us on Wednesday nights and we would go pick up the food and bring it back and serve it. Chick-fil-A um, brought food twice, at least twice, maybe more than that, and they served. Cornell Cooperative Extension had someone come twice to do a class, a cooking class ahead of the meals, and then he would cook the meal and the diners would, would eat what they were taught. The Credo women also came every Thursday. They were my other assistants on Thursday nights. And there were many individuals who came. They not only served, but they cooked as well. Um, recently, and this is very exciting, uh, we were accepted as part of the Central New York Food Bank. Prior to that, local businesses donated food. The amount of food that was donated is unbelievable. Um, we had enough food to be able to choose what we were going to cook each day of the week. And there were times when we were a little bit shy on the food. And guess who donated money monthly to our meals? 
you folks did. And so that helped to fill in the gaps. And it also helped us to purchase a new industrial hot water heater so that now when we do the dishes, you're going to have really hot water, so be careful, but it's going to be able to air dry and it's going to be more sanita sanitary for folks. So again, Asbury came through and we are so grateful. So we became members of the uh, Central New York Food Bank. And the other thing that happened just this past week, the New York State Health Department came and inspected us. We passed with flying colors, and now we have a permit to operate. It's not that we weren't permitted before, <laughs> but now we can do other things if we you know, feel the call to do that. Um, God has been so good to us. Um, I have to tell you personally that doing these, me these meals, meeting the people who come, has changed my mindset about what it means to be homeless. We have people who work full time, but don't make enough money for rent. We have people that don't have an address, so that when they go and apply for, for a, a job, they don't get hired because they don't have an address. It's really a catch-22 with the folks who fall on hard times and, and lose their home. Um, many have mental illness, some are addicts, and we love them all because Jesus loves them all. And um, some, of the, some of the diners have become volunteers in, with the dinners. There was one gentleman at the, at, in the middle of the, the winter this year who came up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder, and showed me his key. He got a place to live. It gives me goosebumps, folks. We are doing Jesus' work, and you are doing Jesus' work with us. God bless you, and thank you. It's now time for the sharing of joys and concerns. Uh, we're going to start out, obviously, with the joys. There's a lot of blessings that God has given us, and it's a great moment to uh, share those during the course of the service today. We have some ushers who uh, will have the microphone for you. Do we, want, do we have any joys to share? While people are thinking, I got I two. Um, Carol and Bill Plemons, their granddaughter is the music choral director in Lowellville. And I've talked a couple times about uh, the music department that they have there being phenomenal. Uh, my granddaughter is 18 and an incredible singer. They did The Little Mermaid this year and she was Ariel. That's how good she was. It was just perfect. So on their last concert last week or maybe prior to it a little bit, the, there's a National Choral Award, which was given to Michaela, and I'm just incredibly proud of her. Yeah. And then also of interest to whomever, um, last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, was my last doctor visit for my foot. Lori Phillips is home from the hospital and doing much better. I have a joy that we had about 25 people here last Monday night for our first study in the Book of Acts, and uh, we still have room, so looking for some new faces that haven't joined us before, 6.30 Monday nights in Wesley Hall. In the parlor. I'm sorry. Thank you. In the parlor. <laughs> Thank you, Max, for leading that. Other joys? The glare. I have a joy. After over 
30 years of teaching, and more than that, retired, I went to start doing something with all of the books and material that up until now I would not get, a, oh, I would not do anything with. I called Sherman School and the principal said, bring it. When I got there, he said, we'll use it. And so I am one delighted ex-teacher. Very nice. And wasn't Sherman School the last school you taught at before you retired? And also where her children started school in Watertown. Oh, so it wow. all comes full circle. That's right. That's awesome. I, I'm on. Okay, you can hear me back. Um, I'm delighted uh, for the youth, um, United Methodist Church in your open and affirming stance. And I would like to invite anybody, now I don't want to take your place, Reverend Michael, but we're having a, a Sunday service on Father's Day to celebrate uh, Watertown Pride at 10 o'clock. So if anybody would like to join us, you're certainly welcome. Thank you, Joanne. Hi, I'd like to expound on Lindsay's remark. Lindsay's granddaughter, Michaela, is an amazing girl, and not only did she win the National Choral Award, which is a big honor, but she also had a flute solo, and she is an amazing flautist, and I really think that she should participate in our summer music program, just saying. There you go. And I say it's a, it's a joy, and I don't, you know, I don't like to... <clears throat> Put people on the spot, but just a joy to see uh, my good friends Bill and Linda Zeznitz here from the Clinton United Methodist Church. They've come to say hello to you and to, um, uh, they're just really good people, so I hope you'll get a chance when we snack, as Methodists do, eat good food. <laughs> that hasn't changed. And if you want the dirt, just go see Bill and Linda, they'll give it to you. Ask them all the questions. So, nice to have you both here. <clears throat> and our list of concerns, I know there's a prayer list in the bulletin, so feel free to check that out. Is there anything that we want to share? Obviously, we're lifting up prayers for, for Ori. If there's anybody else that has a prayer concern, make sure you uh, obviously have permission to share. Yeah, we'll start over here with Darlene. I would like to. It's on. It's on. Speak to it. It is on, darling. Yeah, it just got to speak right in it. Um, I would like to have prayers for the family of a nurse that I had the privilege of working with who died this past couple of weeks. The Carr family is in real suffering at this point. Heather was a wonderful and beautiful person and a wonderful nurse. So I'm asking that you take time to say a prayer for her, her sister, and her mother. Thank you. Yep. I believe in the back, yeah. I like prayers for Bill Hickox. He's having several health problems now that he's having to deal with. Will do. Prayers for Bill. Yeah. Any others? Yeah. Uh, prayers for the Joan Fluhauer family. Joan was the uh, founder of New Day. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, let's be in an attitude of prayer. Loving God, we thank you for creating each one of us and for calling us here. 
Thank you for the many joys that we get to share. Thank you for blessing us with so much. Thank you for each person gathered, each person who's uniquely made in your image. God, sometimes we forget that. Thank you for bringing Joanne among us and to unite the communities to do the ministry that you've called us to do. Thank you for each person that steps up to whatever ministry and gives it their best. We're so active and we can accomplish so much more when we do it together. We're grateful that we are your children and that you've created us and breathed into us and that there's always a place for each one of us. Sometimes, God, we don't feel worthy. We think we have to earn your love or we believe we are too damaged to receive your mercy. Restore us in your loving spirit that we may know beyond any doubt that your love extends to each one of us. No exceptions. God, thank you for the kids that felt they needed to come to church after the loss of a pet. You know, if for no reason other than to be prayed for, thank you. I thank you for these Asbury people who welcome people to come in, even if it's for 20 minutes and leave, because they know that your spirit moves beyond anything. It's so refreshing. God, sometimes we do fool ourselves into believing we're better than anyone else. and We can do everything on our own. We think that our intelligence or compassion or skills or wit elevate us to a higher level of existence in goodness than others around us. But we know that's not so. Humble us. Remind us that we are all equal in the ways that matter your way of love and grace and acceptance. Today, God, we pray for the one who just received news that will change their life. We pray for those who are waiting for a birth or a death. We thank you for those, I mean, we pray for those who have made the headlines for whatever reason. Move in us and around us today, God, as we continue our worship together. Help us to meet you in our neighbor, to see your spirit on the face of each person we meet or are sitting by, and to remember that you are in all things, everywhere from the most ordinary thing to the extraordinary moment. That you are in everything. Transform us by your love, that we may truly live out your love in our daily lives. May our profession of being faithful in you, in words and actions, live out in all that we do. Hear us, we pray, through the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from the uh, book of 2 Corinthians. I'll be reading chapter 4, verse 13, through chapter 5, verse 1. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he who wrote, I believed, and so I spoke, we too believe, and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Because we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymnal is number 333. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Number 333. Please stand. Forget the sermon all together. Well, let's not do that yet. <laughs> there was a clap. I don't know how to take that. Hello. Oh, it worked. Sorry for those of you at home. All right, Asbury, you asked for it. Somebody keeps begging me. Why? Is that a real book? And if so, read something else. The unofficial United Methodist handbook how to respond when someone sits in your pew <laughs> tell me I'm not making that up you see it right last time they made it they all thought I made it up there are certain situations in which we invite visitors into our little sphere of experience like at church. These situations need not be cause for alarm. Number one, smile and greet the intruders. <laughs> Oftentimes, they are visitors to your congregation. Make solid eye contact so they know you mean it. 
Shake hands with them and leave no impression that they've done something wrong. <laughs> Two, view the intrusion as an opportunity. Remember, you don't own the pew. You just borrow it once a week. Take the opportunity to get out of your rut and sit someplace new. This will physically emphasize a change in your perspective and may yield new spiritual insight. Three, if you can tell that your new friends feel uncomfortable at having displaced you, despite your efforts to the contrary, make an extra effort to welcome them. Consider taking them to brunch after church to become better acquainted. If there are too many for you to foot the bill, consider inviting them to accompany you on a go Dutch basis. And last, number four. If Christian hospitality is not in your arsenal of virtues, <laughs> consider standing at the end of the pew locking your crossed arms and looking exasperated and sigh deeply. <sighs> this was a sad angle because I know exactly what Bill's getting right now for that TV. And he's shaking his head, yes. Explain to the onlookers that if you do not sit in the... If <laughs> If you do not sit in that pew, God might not be able to find you. <laughs> we should have a moment in our worship where, like, the unofficial guide. I'm sure this could be yours in your church, Joanne. <laughs> I've been to the church. I sat in Fran's pew, and I learned my lesson. I, people think I make that up. I was in Washington, D.C., going to seminary, and I went to the... Baptist Church, not too far from the seminary. And Fran did not like you sitting in her pew. This was a full African-American church. And Fran was the only tan like me person. And you know what? She showed me her sequined purse. She said, you're in my seat. These people exist. Now, I got to know Fran, and eventually she let me sit with her. That day was different, and I know what those sequins feel like at the side of your cheek. <laughs> and they might look pretty and dangly, but they really scrape. <laughs> All right, now to the real moment. Now that I've got, I've got to cut three pages out now. Darn. So how many of you have heard this scripture from Corinthians before? It's kind of like thrown in. It's in the middle of a, the, it's in the middle. And uh, Paul, you know, always seems to write these letters. And he wants to advance everybody into thinking that um, the title for my sermon is Wasting Away and Not in Margaritaville. <laughs> get it? Play on words just to get you here. Now, if you want to go to Margarita, that, you know, just find that. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. I'm sure you can do that. But he's talking about building up, right? That there's more than just buildings, right? As ad beautiful as Asbury is and all the nooks and crannies you all have here, I swear every week I find a new room. And how you access it, I do not know, but I end up there going, now how did I get here? <laughs> like, this is a bomb shelter. Anybody in Watertown can come to 327 Franklin Street and find a place to be safe. Let me tell you. But our life is more than buildings, you know? It's, yes, they're pretty. But in the end, we can't take that with us either, right? What's more important is not the foundation of the buildings that are being built, but the foundation of our spiritual lives. Right? Think about all the people along the way that mentored you in your faith or were there when you needed them. 
Or thank God, like when you get into ministry, all these people that kind of guide you along the way, and show you and, you know, just kind of are there. We have people that build us up spiritually. And the foundation of our spirit is more than the building or, or a building. When I sold real estate with Century 21, I loved looking at the old houses. One of my favorite listings, well, one of my biggest listings was the Beekman Mansion in Sharon Springs, New York. The Beekman Mansion was the first judge of Schoharie County, Judge Beekman. He had this huge, huge mansion. And he even had a lookout tower at the top of the house. Now, um, two people have bought it and have made it into an actual business and stuff, but I remember the staircase and the chandelier and the little cemetery it has out back and, you know, everything that came with the house. It is an impressive millions of dollars worth of real estate. But the people who now own it have taken such good care of it and have really fixed it up, in fact, made it into a business. And wonderful guys named Josh and Brent, who I got to know and um, really are just genuine, genuine, nice young guys who have just worked hard and always give back. And they treat, they want people to learn to be kind. And so, um, anyway, getting back to the construction things, there's more important than things that are more important than building. And so anyway, a lady by the name of Nicole Gravagna developed a list of six human needs based on 75 years of psychology, neuroscience, and sci uh, sociology. At the top of the list is food, which provides calories and variety of nutrients, right? Because I feel I'm wasting away. You know, this side was a little more vocal than that side. <laughs> Next comes water, right? Giving the body the ability to process food and remove waste. Third, the most important is shelter. Which what? Protects the human body, right? Protects the body from the blazing sun, the snow, the <clears throat> and all the elements and all that stuff, wind and rain. Number four is sleep. Your body needs to take a break. And sleep is important. We all know we need to have food, water, and shelter, and sleep. Jesus also commands us and gives us the food and to go out and give food and um, drink to those who need it. Judy and, and countless other people who have worked with these dinners that Joanne talked about, we learned so much about those that we were in the community with. You know, it was a nice gathering place. And Karen, you've been a part of it. I mean, I know a lot of you have. Um, and you just work together, and, and it's great to see. And I was there the night the gentleman took his keys and was so proud of the fact that he got an apartment. And then somebody says to him, now make sure you follow the rules. <laughs> right? So we do not lose heart, says Paul, even though our outer nature is wasting away our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Paul realizes that our outer nature is wasting away. I asked somebody how they were doing this morning. Yeah, I wake up in aches and pains every day. My great, my, well, my, my mom's stepdad, my grandfather, I used to say to him, um, so how are you doing this morning, Gramp? And every day he'd tell you, miserable. <laughs> he was miserable every day I knew him in my life. Or somebody in the store would say, how are you doing, Mel? He'd say, miserable even though I don't think he was really miserable as he seemed. But our outer nature is giving away. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, says Paul, we have 
a building from God, not a house made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The Apostle Paul, just so you know, was a master builder. He built lots of things. When Paul arrived in Corinth, he stayed with a married couple, right? And even in Acts, they tell us that they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. So he earned his place making tents, temporary shelters. Paul knew that people needed shelter. That's why I think Paul's words to the Corinthians are actually in harmony with the last two of the six human needs identified by this same neuroscientist, Nicole. It's other people, number five. We need to be around other people. We need to gather as people. My mom was one of those that said, I don't need to go to church. I can see it at home. I can see it wherever. I don't need to be in church. But it's to be around each other, right? To share each other's joys, to lift one another up if we're down. I can look at your face and tell if you need a hug or not. Hold on. Somebody needs a hug over here. Whoa, where did that pew cushion go? Oh, Lord have mercy. Did you hear the crank cross? Oh, oh for doing a good deed. Oh, it was still worth the hug, but boy, did that hurt. I should have looked to make sure there was a cushion. Why did only some of you have cushions? Are the front pews not worthy of having cushions in this place? I'm talking to trustees. Yeah. Swallow those words. Hold on. Refresh. Okay. We have to be around other people. And lastly, hey, what do you think the last one would be? What do you think the last one would be? I'll bet Asbury knows you know everything. Love, oh yeah, love is definitely part of all of this. <laughs> Candy, <laughs> chocolate, Hershey's. I got gotcha. you. Novelty. Novelty creates the opportunity to learn and the ability to fail. Without regular novelty, motivation wanes and a healthy sense of well-being is lost. And since novelty is anything that is new, original or unusual, Paul would connect novelty to our eventual home, a building from God, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. When it comes to buildings, we know that there's nothing more novel, as well as pews without cushions. Oh, fuck. Well, that's why I don't think I look, because that one's covered. You all see that, right, choir? Chris is like, just suck it up, Michael. Move on. Am I right, Krista? No. Mm -hmm. This whole scripture reminds us that at the end... <laughs> This has got to be a first. I don't even know where I ended. I hope you got it all, that our eternal home is more important. I think I'm done. Amen. Amen. They're all done, Kath. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't compete with that. We're all going home, and it doesn't have buildings. Well, it probably does. Go for it, Nate. All yours, brother. I don't know how I follow that. <laughs> we, we have come to give praise to God and Amen. say thank you for all that God has given us. In thanksgiving and praise, let us bring our gifts and offerings before God.
please rise for the doxology. pray. Almighty Creator, you have blessed us with abundant life and steadfast love. We offer these gifts to you, asking that your Holy Spirit will bless them and use them to shower grace and love upon our brothers and sisters, both near and far. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And our last hymn is Tis the Old Ship of Zion, number 345. swaying and moving. We're not allowed to do that in the United Methodist Church. <laughs> That's right. Friends, God has blessed us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. God has brought us here and formed us into new people. We gathered, we sang, we prayed, we got to hear scripture, we got some laughs, but most importantly, we got to be together. We worshiped God. So let's go forth from this place. Let us go and give grace to those in the world who need it and let us go out with God's blessing to share love peace and hope go in God's peace and until we meet again may God hold you in the palm of God's hands amen
the postlude today, the Asbury Ringers.
Good morning, I am Nikki Patrick, and on behalf of the Pastor Staff Parish Relations Committee, we would like to take a second to recognize Martha Jablonski for her many years as director of the Asbury Ringers. Many of you know Martha was here with Gail Powers when the handbell program started in the 1970s when two octaves of handbells were donated in the memory of Wesley Timmerman. A year after the youth handbells were started, the adults became interested and the Asbury Ringers were created. Over the years, the program grew to include the teenagers, the Wesley Ringers, and a beginning adult group called the Rookie Ringers, who are now called the Agape Ringers. Martha was involved with all of these groups at some point, as well as becoming Asbury's organist and choir director following Robert Huey in 1985. Martha's love of music and handbells has brought so much joy to the Asbury congregation, as well as to those who have been fortunate enough to play under her leadership, which has spanned multiple generations within multiple families, even at this table. Martha is retiring today as director of the Asbury Ringers, and we will certainly miss her leadership. Bob Muntz, who plays the bottom octave of the bass bells, will start as our new director in September. So thank you, Martha, or Mrs. J, as many of us still call her today. Your leadership and dedication to the music of Asbury Church has made a joyful difference in all of our lives. And I think we're dismissed. Thank you.